today I'm going to talk about the powers which control cities. This is a very important topic. If you are a pastor, if you are a business leader, if you are a political leader, just so for everyone, it's very important to know the powers which control a city. When you take over cities, you can take over nations. In the Bible, the children of Israel they were able to conquer cities and then eventually they took over nations. It's important to know the powers, the spiritual powers which governs any city. And this is why I'm here today. It's going, it's going to be an interesting, to be a very interesting topic. That's why you see me holding the mic today because I don't want you to miss anything. I want the audio to be clear so that you can hear everything which I'm about to tell you. Guys, watch this video to the end. It's going to be a, 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 a bit long. Kindly watch it to the end. Share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Now, before we do, we do that, let me just take you around the city and just give you a glimpse of what you're going to, to see as we're going to talk about today. Clear reading. Are you Benjamin? Jack Solo? Hello guys, thanks for watching. It's me once again, Cleo Faswanyama, Cleo with it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Go and watch my teaching videos. I have amazing teaching videos which you have to watch. Also, I'm a gospel artist. Go and support me, guys. Go and watch my videos. Go and watch my music. Share my music and it will help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Also, those who are sending me your, your financial contribution, I'd like to appreciate you. Guys, keep on supporting me. Send us your financial donations so as to enable us to do what we're doing also even in a better way, in a more excellent way. Guys, thank you for your support. Now, today, we're going to talk about the powers which control the city. The spiritual powers which control the city. Every city has a power which controls it. If you don't know, every city has a power which controls it. And in today's model, we are going to use Mombasa, where I am, as a model, as a case study, to give you an example on how cities are being controlled from the realm of the spirit. Now, as I go about to, to explain the, the, the altars which are behind this city, it will also help you to understand what's happening in your city. This is just an example of what's happening in, in any city across the world, be it in New York, be it in Nairobi, be it in Kampala, be it in Dar es Salaam, or London, Johannesburg, anywhere you are, as I'm going to show you in this video, it will make you to understand the powers, you'll be able to know the powers which are controlling your cities, and I'll also show you how to go about them. Now, Mombasa, we are talking about Mombasa, the powers which control Mombasa County, Mombasa City. Now, I want you to understand, the powers which control the city are the altars in that city. The powers which control any city are in the altars which are in that city. Now, what are the altars that we eat in Mombasa? We you need to know the altars which are in that city. Now, another thing before getting to know the altars in the city, you also need to know the history of that city. History creates patterns. History, we, we talk about patterns in other videos, which I did, but which the history creates patterns, and life follows patterns. That's why they say that history keeps repeats itself, because life follows patterns. There is nothing new under the sun, it's written in, in the Bible. So we need to know, if you want to, before you, you get to understand the altars which control any city, you need to know the, the history of that city, the ancient history, and then you'll be able to understand the patterns which are in that city and how to go about changing those patterns. Now, Mombasa is an ancient city. Mombasa is the gate of East and Central Africa. Many years ago, centuries ago, the white man will became the East African coast. coast. One of the cities they used to enter into the interior part of Africa is Mombasa. 
Sheep would come because those days there were no aeroplanes. They used to come by sea. They would come with their with their with their sheep and look at the at the shores of of Mombasa. Gain entry, gain entry also. They also carried slaves from this side of Mombasa. Now Mombasa is a gate. Now history tells us that Mombasa is was a gate, was a gate of East and Central Africa. Until now, Mombasa is still a gate of East and Central Africa through the port. In, in a modern day, we have the port of Mombasa, KPA. Many goods which, which go, which comes from Rwanda, which comes to, to Rwanda, which can, which, which, goods which go to Rwanda, goods which go to Uganda, and other parts of Africa, they pass, they pass through the ports of Mombasa. It's still the gate of East and Central Africa. It was in the ancient day, and it, it is Till now, now also now it shows you how history repeats itself. We need to study the patterns. So Mombasa is a crucial area, is a crucial point in the in the realm of the spirit. In 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 many cities across East Africa, Mombasa is one of the most important cities. We need to understand and we need to know the altars which are operating it, so that we can establish a dominion in it. I hope you're together. Act there now, Mombasa. As I say, is the gate of East and Central Africa. It was the port of entry which the white man used to enter. Until today, is the point of entry which goods enter through the port of Mombasa. People buy their goods, they import their vehicles, they come through the port of Mombasa, going to Uganda, to Rwanda, to Congo, and other parts of Africa. They use the port of Mombasa. So it's still a gate till now. Now, this shows the significance of Mombasa. Now, it's not only a gate physically, it's also a gate spiritually. Life is spiritual. Whatever you see in the physical is an important of the spirit. Now, this shows you that Mombasa spiritual is a gate. Mombasa is a gate of which of, of East and Central Africa. Whatever happens in Mombasa can affect East and Central Africa because it's a point of entry in the ancient things until today. It's a major gate which we need to possess. It's a major city which we need to know how it operates. Now, back to the history. Continuing with the history. In 1593, the Portuguese came to Mombasa and built the Fort Jesus. Fort Jesus, as you can see, Fort Jesus was built in 1593 by, by the Portuguese. By the Portuguese. Now they came here to preach the gospel, and they established they, they are, their main aim was to do trade and also establish the lordship of Jesus Christ along this areas. This one, these people, they came as, as missionaries. They came through Mombasa and they built the fort. It's called Fort Jesus. Years after, the Arabs came and took over the fort from the Portuguese and. Uh, the Fort Jesus also, years later, they took back their fort. And then again, the Arabs took away the fort, the fort from the Portuguese for good. Now, inside the Fort, the, the, the fort Jesus, they built, they built mosque. So, this shows you at the cost in the ancient days, it was a place of war. There was so much war because the Fort Jesus, it was built like a barrack, like a military base for the Portuguese to fight. The enemy who was trying to enter the coast of Mombasa. Now, they, as, as I tell you, the, 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 fort, the fort was a military barrack. This shows that, according to these patterns, it shows that Mombasa is a place of war, is a place of warfare. And if you don't know, formerly Mombasa Island was called Mvita Island. It was called Mvita. Mvita is, is a Swahili word, comes from the word Vita, which means war. So this place was a place of war. Mombasa was a place of war. The Portuguese fought with the Arabs. They fought with the Omans. It was a place of war. So this shows you very well that this is a place of war. So it signifies in the realm of the spiritual, those who are in Mombasa. Mombasa is a place of spiritual warfare. There are high levels of spiritual warfare. People want dominance of this place. They are spirits which want dominance of people. Over this place, the same way the, the, the Portuguese and the Arabs were fighting for dominance over to control the coast of Mombasa through 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 the forts. The same way they used to to, to fight over the fort Jesus to to have 
dominance over the coast of Kenya through Mombasa. This is the same way in the realm of the spirit. There is war. There are spirits which want dominance of this coast. There are evil spirits which want dominance of this city. So, according to history, as I'm going to, to, to show you, this is a place of war. Mombasa is a place of war. It's a, a, a place of high level of spiritual warfare. I've encountered it myself in, in, in my moments of prayer. Mombasa, if you don't know, let me inform those, those of you in, who live in Mombasa, those of you who stay in Nairobi, you need to know, those of you in Eastern and Central Africa, you need to understand Mombasa is a place of war. People came, people, this is a place which warfare started centuries ago and is still going on in the spirit. As I told you, whatever happens in the physical is a report card of what's happening in the realm of the spirit. If you see people fighting in the flesh, that means in the spirit there's also war. So this is a place of war. This is a place of warfare. Christians need to rise up and pray. This is not physical war. I'm not talking about physical war like the Portuguese used to do. This is a place of spiritual warfare. You need to stand up and pray. Warfare. There are demons in this area. There are demons who want dominance in this area. There are evil spirits which want dominance in this area. There are magins which want dominance in this area. There are forces of darkness, principalities and powers. There are altars which want dominance in this area. This is why we need to fight. We need to fight and establish the victory which was given to us by Jesus Christ on the, on the coast of Calvary. Apart from the history of Mombasa, which I've explained to you that it is the, it, it was and is still the gateway to East and Central Africa. Number one, that's number one, because the way they used to enter the, the mainland through the coast of Mombasa. Number two, it is a place of heightened warfare. The British Jews and the Arabs used to, used to fight. People used to fight. That's why they built the Fort Jesus as a, as a military barrack. It's a place of warfare. Now, my question is, as a Christian, do you have a military? Do we have military barracks? They may have built the fort physically, but what is important is a spiritual fort, not the, the physical fort. No, a, spirit, a spiritual fort to wage war against the, fort, the forces of darkness. Now, after we have learned about the history, now let's talk about the altars. Altar number one, the elephant tusks. It was in the year 1950s, if I'm not wrong, 1950 something, 1952 there, the Queen Elizabeth came to Kenya and they commemorated his coming by setting up the elephant tusks. That's why they set up those elephant tusks. Now, I have nothing wrong with the elephant tusks. This, it is beautiful. It's a landmark in Mombasa. It's helpful to make, to make the city beautiful. But there is a spiritual there is a spirit behind those tasks. Now, anything which has to do with four horns is a spiritual thing. Do you know that in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 2, if you read um, the whole of Zechariah chapter 2, there is a place we'll find that it talks about the four horns. The four horns which scatter people. The four horns which scatter Judah. Now, these are the four horns which scatter Judah. I'm not talking about the, the physical horns. I'm talking about the spiritual horns. There are spiritual horns which scatter Judah. There are spiritual horns which scatter people in this county and across the eastern and central Africa. Now, I want you to understand something. Behind any statue, there is a spirit. Behind anything, there is a spirit. That's why God didn't want anybody to bow down to any idol. Why would God get angry with the Israelites for building a golden calf? It was just a golden calf. It was just an idol, nothing. It was not even breathing. No, because God understands behind any statue, there is a spirit. Behind any carving, a spirit can come behind it and can be used as deity. Now, behind the elephant tusks, we see them. There is a spirit which scatters. The spirit of four horns. Let me remind you something. In the Old Testament, the altars, the altar which the children of Israel built had four horns. Altars in the Old Testament used to have four horns. So this is very important. You need to see these things from the spiritual eye. With a spiritual perspective, you'll be able to understand these things. That's why Jesus said, um, for you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. 
But those who are outside, they think these things are in paramount. Life is a mystery. And if you, if you don't have that deeper revelation, you may see them as ordinary things. But inside, there are mysteries. There are hidden mysteries which we need to unravel and share it with people so that their eyes can be opened. Now, behind those tasks, there are spirits. Believe me not, because that, that is the, in the realm of the spirit, that is the place which is the gate of this city, is that elephant task. That is the gate of Mombasa. That's where the gate of Mombasa is. There are a lot of spirits there, but you may not see them with the physical eye. But intercessor, if you are, if you are an intercessor, and you know these things, you may, you, you may be able to understand what I'm talking about. Their spirits now. These four homes scatter. They scatter. Zakara saying the four homes will scatter to These are the four homes. Scatter businesses. Businesses are being scattered by these four homes. Marriages, families, ministries are being scattered by these four homes. In the, in the entertainment industry in Mombasa, it doesn't grow. Many art, artists are complaining, whether secular artists or gospel artists, they are complaining because they, they are not making anything from this place. Though they are talented, most musicians, let me tell you something, the secret in this city, there has never been a successful musician from Mombasa who lives in Mombasa, records in Mombasa, and just this is his place. Most of them, they usually shift to Nairobi. You have to shift. If you remain here, you will not make it. It's hard. There's never been any musician who has made it, who is from Mombasa, who has made it from Mombasa, lives in Mombasa, records in Mombasa, does everything in Mombasa. It has never happened. In the music industry, I'm talking of that because I'm an artist and I know what artists tell me and I also know what I experience. Many people shift to Nairobi. Most of the big artists in, in Kenya, they were once based in Mombasa, but they shifted in Nairobi and, and they blew and they become big. Why? The altars here, they scatter. They don't allow you to rise. There are altars which scatter. They can't allow musicians to rise. There are altars which scatter. This altar, this, this spirit behind the task, they scatter businesses. They, they, there are some businesses which, which can never rise. They are scattered. There are some ministries which are scattered by these horns. I hope you understand what I'm saying. These horns, the four horns which scatter, it, it scatters nearly everything in this region and it extends to Eastern Central Africa. We need to rise in prayer against these four horns. I'm not talking about pulling them down. No. Pulling them down is not a solution. That thing is beautiful. What we need to deal with it is the spirit behind those stuff. We need to deal with those spirits. And once we deal with those spirits, we get rid of the, of the spirit of the four homes which scatter. Let me tell you something. In every city, the building, some buildings which are built, they are built to dedicate them to a deity. They are dedicated to a deity or to a certain spirit. You may not be able to understand. You may just see them as beautiful. But behind those buildings, there are covenants. There are altars which are speaking in those buildings, in those monuments, in those statues. Some of the statues, they are, they are just, you know, the devil is smart. You will not build a shrine which will make you understand it clearly, it, uh, very quickly, he'll build like a statue, something which is nice, people admire, but you don't know, you may not know, behind those statues, there are spirits, behind those statues, there are altars, there are altars which scatter, there are altars which, working, which are working against the people, and you need to deal with those altars spiritually. Altars, in the Old Testament, they used to break them. When the Israelites went into a city, when they took over cities, the first thing they did is to bring down the altars. They destroyed the altars. They, they, they destroyed the statues, the, the, the graven images. They destroyed them. That's how they took over the city. But now, in the New Testament, we don't do that. We destroy them from the realm of the Spirit. We destroy them by prayer. We don't destroy things. We don't we don't vandalize things. It is wrong. It is against the law. Please don't do it. I'm not telling you this thing to start crazy things. No. These things, we have to deal with them in prayer. It's only in prayer that we want to deal with them. Now, this is the spirit behind the elephant chest in Mombasa. The second, the second altar, which is strong, very strong in this region, is the altar of Islam. As I told you, the Portuguese and the Oman Arabs, they were fighting over the fort. And eventually, the, the, the Oman Arabs took over the, the fort. They even built a mosque inside the fort. 
Now, one of the most dominant altars in this region, in Mombasa, in the coast region, is the altar of Islam. It is very strong. The altar of Islam is stronger than the altar of Christians. Let me tell you that. Because if you want to know the strength of how strong which all altar controls the city, look at the businesses, the big businesses in the city. Look at the leadership of the city, the politics of the city, who owns most shops, who owns most buildings. Who are the political leaders who have the say in the city? Once you realize the people who own who are in these areas, you know which altar is dominant. And in Mombasa, in this county, in this area, is the altar of Islam. Why is the altar of Islam dominant? I love my Muslim bro brothers. For one thing, they are prayerful. They are consistent in prayer. Whoever prays dominates. Whoever prays dominates. The problem with Christians, what is disturbing Christians is prayerlessness. Muslims pray five times a day. How many times do you pray in a day? That's why wherever there is Islam, there is prosperity. Wherever there is Islam, there is oil. Mention any Islamic nation, you will always find oil. You also find you always find prosperity because they pray. The commitment to their deity makes their altar stronger. So their altars are fighting for them. If you find any Islamic nation which is not prosperous, it's those nations which have embraced the war, like Afghanistan, like Somalia. But if those nations had decided to settle down, let me tell you, they would be one of the more one of the most prosperous nations, like Arab Arabia, Dubai, Qatar, all those nations where people from this region go to work there. They, there's no most of the most of our youth. They look for all things to, to work in Saudi Arabia because there are no jobs around. Those people provide employment to many people around this region. So it's very important to understand why is it so? Because they, they are all tied strong. Muslims are prayerful. And an altar is commitment to deity. The more you are committed to your deity, to your God, the more your God fights for you. In Mombasa is the only place or Islam are the only people when it's time for prayer they will close their shop even if you're standing at the door of their shop with one million dollars they will close their shop they'll say let me go and pray first you'll come you come back after I'm done with my prayers money does not move them it shows how they value their God that's why that's how strong their altar is and whoever wrote let me tell you something. The stronger the altar is the altar which dominates. The altar which is strong is the altar which dominates in any city, in any region. Let me give you the secret of my of our Muslim brothers. They are prayerful. They are prayerful. Regardless of what you may think of them, they are prayerful. This is one of the altars which are very strong here in Mombasa. The altar of Islam, not only in Mombasa, in many cities, the altar of Islam is strong because they pray, they pray five times a day. Their commitment to their deity is so much. Are you committed to God? You only pray very, very early in the morning, once a day, and you think you are prayerful. Prayer should be a, a constant thing. You should be doing regularly. Always pray. Paul said, pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. Anytime you are praying, you are opening up a portal for heaven to, to come to earth. Prayer is like opening portals, spiritual portals, for heaven to intercede into our affairs. So guys, that's why the altar of Islam is one of the strongest altar here in the city. Another altar which is dominant in this region is the altar of witchcraft. There's a lot of witchcraft in this area. A lot of witchcraft. When you walk around the city, you'll find signposts of, of uh, witch doctors putting their numbers. If you want, if you are looking for this and this, contact this number. There's a lot of witchcraft in this area. The altar of witchcraft also is dominant in this area. People practice a lot of witchcraft. Nowadays, witches are no longer in the village. They also they have also migrated to town. There are very many witches and wizards around. At night, if your eyes are open spiritually, you'll be able to see. You can able to see in the room of the spirits. There's a lot of witchcraft in this area. That's also other, another altar which is dominant in this city. And not only in Mombasa, 
But in other counties, in other nations, in other cities, we have all types of witchcraft which are dominant. Now, as I'm showing you, I'm, I'm not just talking about Mombasa. Some of the cities which you are, you are in also experience the same thing which are in this city. So this is just a case study. I'm using Mombasa City, Mombasa City as a case study. Now, another dominant altar in this place is the altar of Freemason. This is where there are so many influential people who are visiting this altar. Very many rich people and influential people in the city they are visiting this altar. The altar of Freemason is also dominant in the city. I don't want to talk about more about the altar of Freemason. Just know there is the altar of Freemason also, which is dominant in the city. Altar of Freemason are scattered in many cities across the world. These are one of the secret societies which people enter. They don't just allow anybody. There's, a, there's, how, there's a, a criteria you have to meet for them to accept you. And then you enter a covenant with them. And then you get wealth and become influential. The altar of Freemason also is one of the altars which are dominant in, in this city, which are controlling this city. Now, the last altar which I'm going to talk about is called marine spirits. They are marine spirits. Now, I want you to, to, know, to know something. Also, the geographical location of the city determines also the spirits which are, which are operating in the city. It determines the kinds of principalities and powers operating in the city. Now, cities which are around the mountains, they have a different spirit which are operating in those areas. There are also demons which dwell in mountains or forests. forests. Have you heard of evil forests? There are also spirits which dwell in areas which have water bodies. Like here in Mombasa, we have the Indian Ocean. We have marine spirits which are tormenting people. Marine spirits, queen of the coast, these things are found in this area which are tormenting people. These are the demons which come to sleep with women and kids. Some of these marine spirits, they are spiritual husbands also. They come from the ocean. People, people who have sleep paralysis, some of these things they come from the marine spirit. And I want you to understand the important how powerful water bodies are. Water bodies are very powerful. Look in the book of Genesis. The Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord moved where on the face of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And in the book of Psalms, if I'm not wrong, Psalms 24, uh, verse 2 10. David says that God laid the foundations of the earth upon the waters. The foundation of the earth was laid upon the waters. Here, in the ocean, in the water bodies, God put the foundations of the earth. This is a very powerful statement. Now, how did you know that? You know, Moses, when Moses went down to Egypt, God told Moses, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, the first miracle which Moses did, apart from turning the stick into a snake to demonstrate God's power in front of Pharaoh, before he continued with the mission which God had given him, what Moses did, the first thing God Moses did is what he went to turn to turn water into blood. Why did Moses turn water into blood? It wasn't just a show. Moses had to paralyze the powers of Egypt. Egypt were drawing power from the river Nile. So he had to paralyze the marine spirits that which Egypt were using, were tapping from to perform their rituals and their things. So Moses had the first thing Moses did, it was to cut short the power supply which was using, which Egypt was using, was using was the river Nile. That's why he turned it into blood. You, you just think it was just turning it to blood for the show. No, Egyptians were using waters, water spirits to contact power. You know, these elements of nature have as power. God gave them power, if you don't know. Elements of nature. Now, as I've told you, God made the foundations of the earth upon what? The waters. Waters have power. When God wanted to destroy the, 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 whole, uh, the whole earth, he used water. He brought the flood. Water is very important thing here. Uh, they say that 70%, uh, almost 70% of the earth is water. Water is life. 
Now, I want you to know that God did not create the water bodies to be used for witchcraft. But Adam, when Adam fell, creation was held bondage. That's why in the book of Romans chapter 8, he said, creation is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. Creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Why? Because creation has been held bondage by witches and wizards. They are using the sun, which against God's will. They are using the water bodies. They are using the earth. Water bodies are very powerful. This is why Moses had to turn water into blood to cut short the power of Egypt. So the power which it was remained with was very, very weak. Very, they had very little power. The, the very of Moses was, 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 was easily able to defeat them. Now you need to understand these were strategies in the realm of the spirit. Moses didn't just go and felt that ah, today I'm just going to turn water into blood. He went and no, these were strategies. These were strategies he was using. The first thing he did, he, he, needed, he needed to paralyze, to paralyze the Nile. He needed to paralyze the marine spirit to strip off their power. That's why the Egyptians were stranded. And you know Moses, he held the Egyptians bondage. The, the Egyptians were held captive by Moses until they let the people go. It's very important to understand altars. Life is, battles are fought at altars. Don't joke with altar. Whoever raises an altar controls the, la the people, the land, and everybody around that place. Altars are very, are very important. That's why anywhere in the Old Testament, wherever Abraham went, he raised altars. In the Old Testament, wherever the children of Israel went, they raised altars. And in whichever city they went to conquer, they destroyed the satanic altars. Altars are very important. But now in this new dispensation of grace in the New Testament, altars are not physical. Altars are spiritual. No, now as I'm telling you, we have marine spirits. Does it mean that we don't go to the beach? No, we go to the beach. God did not create the ocean for the devil. God did not create the water bodies for the devil. It is us to keep the devil out of the ocean. Stop using it because we have to talk to those things were created for us and we were given dominion over the earth. So it's important to know these marine spirits also they torment people. The marine spirits, most of the witches and wizards from up country, after they have done whatever they are doing, they usually come to the coast for, for like graduation. They come here to graduate for, to the they come to the marine spirits for their final graduation. So it's important. Cities which have water bodies, usually they have they fight with marine spirits. You need to know these things. This is spiritual warfare strategies which I'm giving you. If you're an intercessor, you need to know these things. When we have this knowledge, it is easier to know where to direct our prayers. It is easier to win victory. The end, time, the end time church is going to be victorious. And this is why God has given me this message so that I can give to you, you the body of Christ, so that you can know the altars which are around your city, the altars which are in your city. And we know, and so that we can know how to can disarm them because we have authority. We have authority Christ Jesus. Now, these are the altars. Job book number one. The book of Jesus. Yeah. Job number one. The book of City, it may be something else. In another city, it may be a structure. In another city, it may be something. It may, it may be a statue. I don't know. Elephant. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that you just go around to look to to look for any statue in the city or any monument, and then you try you try to demonize it. No, I'm not trying to demonize anything. These are things which are are filled by the Spirit of God, so that the eyes can be open. And even if God has revealed to you something, don't. Just go foolishly to confront people trying to act crazy. No, you deal with it from the spiritual perspective with wisdom. Because we are the children of God, we have the wisdom, we have the mind of Christ. We don't do things foolishly. Foolishness will only bring you, will only cause you problem. It won't solve anything. So these are the altars. These are the powers which control this city. And if God gives me the grace, I might come to a city. And also try to expose and show you what are the altars which the altars which control the city and show you the keys how to go about it. Now, in Mombasa, there are those youths which are involved in drugs. These marine spirits are the cause of drug abuse. 
also the horns which scatter has scattered people, has scattered this youth. Many youth are not working here because they are involved in drugs. These are caused by marine spirits. These marine spirits cause a lot of harm in the lives of people. And we need to silence these spirits with the power of God because the greater one lives in us. I'm not trying to show you this thing to create fear. I'm showing this thing to enlighten you so that you can know how to go into war spiritually. Guys, don't go anywhere. In my next video, now I'll be showing you, I'll be showing you how to possess the gates of the city. I'll show you how to possess the gates of the city. Now, in this video, I've shown you the altars, the altars which are controlling the city, the altars which have which govern this territory. But now, in the next video, I have to give you the keys on how to disarm these altars, how to have dominion over those altars so that we can walk in the victory which God has given us. I want to tell you something. In this ancient church, God is, is bringing the, the people out of the church to go into the streets. Time has come for us not to sit, in, to warm the benches. Time has come for us to influence the world, to influence the marketplace, to influence politics, to influence sports, to influence entertainment, to influence every sector of life with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Guys, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Kindly send us your financial contributions so as to help us do whatever we do. I hope you are blessed by this video. I'll be doing more of this by the grace of God. So guys, thank you. See you next time. God bless you. Bye. Today we're going to talk about how to destroy or how to defeat the spiritual powers which are operating in Mombasa County or in any other territory, whichever. This is just a model of how to go about in this spiritual warfare and how to deal with this, uh, this uh, demonic presence in cities and in territory so that we can subdue them. It's very important to subdue cities. Very important. I'm talking to pastors here. I'm talking to intercessors. I'm talking to business, Christian business people, business leaders. I'm talking to Christian politicians. I'm talking to everybody in the body of Christ. We, okay, we thank God for the victory which has, God has given us in the church, in, in ministries. We've seen ministries are growing. The church is doing well, but it's not enough. God has called us to go into the world. That's why Jesus left his comfort, his comfort place in heaven. He left his throne in heaven to come to earth, to conquer it, and he conquered it. Now we are supposed to do the same. God has called us to conquer the earth. Whoever was born of God overcomes the world. Now we are, have to conquer the earth. And you cannot conquer, you cannot have dominion if you don't take, take, take charge of territories. It's important. We need to take charge of, of territories. We need to take charge of cities. We need to possess the gates of cities. It's very important. It's not enough. It's not enough only to to preach in, in the church. It's good, but time has come. God is 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 raising up an army which is going to to possess territories and cities for His name. It's very very important. This one, this video is all about. Clear Within. Hello guys, thanks for watching once again. It's me, Clear Faswanyama. Clear Within, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm a gospel artist. Go and watch my music, go and support my music. And also those who are sending us your financial contributions, we thank you for, for giving us your support. It's, it's, uh, it's helping us to do what we are doing. Now today we are going to talk about how to defeat the spiritual powers controlling Mombasa County or in any place. Now, this is, this is, these are strategies for spiritual warfare. For now, any, any warfare which is being fought, the general or the, the person leading the army 
must have a strategy. You cannot go to warfare without a strategy. That will be a su suicide mission. We need, we need to have a strategy. Strategy on how to conquer these cities and on how to subdue kingdoms for God. It's very important. Now, I want you to know that cities are different. One city is another, is different from another. The, the principalities operating in Mombasa County are not the same which are operating in Nairobi. They are not the same which are operating in Kampala or in Dar es Salaam, in Kinshasa, in New York. There may be some similarities, but there are also places here and here where they differ. The terms of these things which I'm going to, to show you, number one, is important. When you are going to possess the gates of city or you want to subdue a city, or you want to subdue the forces, the evil forces in a city, you need to know the terrain of the city. Is it near mountains? Is it near a, a water bodies? If it is water bodies, which kind of water bodies? Is it oceans? Is it rivers? Is it near forests? Is it near? It's very important to know the, the nature of the place. Remember the book of Romans that says that creation is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. Creation is growing because there is power in creation. And the devil uses those forces of nature for witchcraft and to bring harm in the lives of people. If you don't know that, you have to know creation has power. That's why Romans chapter 8 says creation is groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. Creation is, is groaning for us to stop those demonic operations using the nature against the church and against God's people. Now, you need to know the area. The ge how is it geographically? Is it near mountains? The, the spirits which operate near mountains are different from the spirits which operate in water bodies. Is it near forests? It's very important to know the area. And then, another thing, you need to know the patterns of that place. The history of that place is important. We in, our, in, our, in other videos, we talk about life follows patterns. And patterns always repeat themselves. There is nothing new under, under the sun. Everything in this world follows a certain pattern. We talk about this in the video called The Patterns of Life. Go and watch it in, in, in this channel. It's called The Patterns of Life. Go and watch it. We talk about life follows patterns. Now you need to know the history of the place so that you can know the patterns which are taking place in that city. Once you know the pattern, you know how to go about it. Life is about patterns. Now, if, if even a doctor, when you go to a doctor, they ask you, what are the symptoms you are feeling? Why? Because those symptoms are patterns of a certain disease. The symptoms are patterns of a certain ail ailment. So once they know the pattern and they carry out some tests, they are be, they'll be able to prescribe drugs for you. They're able to give solutions. Now, it's the same thing. We need to know the patterns of the city. That's why in, Mo, in Mombasa, we talk about the four Jesus. Mombasa was a place of war, warfare. Now, it, it was a place, the, the physical, it was a place of physical war. Now, as you say, whatever happens in the physical realm is a report card of what happens in the realm of the spirit. Now, spiritually, Mombasa is a place of war. It, formerly, this place was called Mvita, an island, Mvita. Vita, M, Vita. Vita is a Swahili word meaning war. So you, you can you, you can get the uh, the significance of it. Now, Mombasa is a place of warfare. You may not see it with the physical eyes. You may not be able to feel it. But with the realm, when you have spiritual lessons, you be able to see from the realm of the spirit. This is a place of heightened spiritual warfare. Forces of darkness are, 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 are trying to enforce their dominion in this territory. Now, it's important to know the history. Once you know the history, you, you will be able to know how to go about, how to go about, how to go about the city so that we can, we can, we can lay siege of the city and take charge of the city. It's very important. It's very important to possess the gates of city. And let me tell you something very important. Cities are not ruled by politicians. Cities or nations are not controlled are not controlled by politicians or by president or by kings and and, and those politicians. Cities and nations are controlled by altars. 
I repeat, cities are not controlled by politicians. Cities and nations are controlled by altars. So whoever raises an altar controls the territory, controls the people, and controls everything. Even they can make legislation. If you find in a territory, people are behaving in a certain way. That's why you find in a territory, people are behaving, are behaving in a certain different way compared to another territory. Why? It's because of the altars which are there. Not necessarily the leaders. You can change the leaders, but if you don't deal with the altars, the problem remain, remains. I'm going to explain it in, in subsequent videos about the gates. Now, you, you cannot talk about altars if you don't talk about gates. You know, when you raise altars, you possess gates. And gates are the control power of any territory. That's why Jesus said that I'll give you the keys of the kingdom, whatever, bind or shall be bound in heaven, loose enough, and the gates of hell. The, the power of hell is at, it is at its gates. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Whoever possesses the gates controls. The gates of heaven are the powers of heaven. So you cannot talk about altar without talking about uh, gates and covenants. They go together, altars, gates, and covenants. And altars, gates, and covenants, they make a throne. They are foundation stones of a throne. Now, now the altars of Mombasa, how do you deal with these altars in found in Mombasa? It's very important. Now, we talk about uh, the Mombasa tasks called the Mbiagov. Now, this, this has nothing to do with demolitions. This has, this has nothing to do with demolishing structures. No, please, please, we are not going to do this the Old Testament way. We want to do it the spiritual way. Are you getting my point? Now, in any city, th there can be structures which were raised as portals to have a demonic presence in the city. And such structures can operate as altars. There are, I repeat, there are structures which are put up in the cities. They can be buildings, they can be statues, they can be monuments, they can look like decorations, but those structures are altars. Behind those structures, there are portals which draw, which, which draw power from the demonic realm, from hell, so that it can influence cities, it can, so that it can influence nations negatively. And let me tell you something. Altars are very important. If you deal, if you deal with the person, and if you don't deal with the altar, the problem will never go away. Let me give you an example. Example is the, is the story of Elijah. Elijah, they went to, 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 to the mountain, and then he called the the priests of Baal to call their god to to bring down fire to consume the sacrifices. Now, the, the priests of Baal could not make their God bring down fire. Now, Elijah was able to do it. Elijah called for fire and fire came. Thereafter, Elijah went and killed all the prophets of Baal. Now, one mistake which Elijah did, Elijah killed the prophets, but Elijah did not destroy the altar. That's, that's why when Jezebel came, Elijah was threatened and Elijah fled. He, he even yeah. wanted to commit suicide. Why? Because he dealt with the priesthood, but he did not deal with the altar. An altar is the foundation stone of any throne, is the foundation stone of any territory. If Elijah had destroyed the altar of Jezebel, the altar of Baal, it would have been easier to defeat Jezebel. But he destroyed the priest, but he did not deal with the altar. Now, Elijah, God took him. He went to heaven. But do you know that when Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, which came again in the New Testament as John the Baptist, still the spirit of Jezebel was still haunting for Elijah. This is why John the Baptist was beheaded. He is, he, the spirit of Elijah, Elijah himself, escaped to be beheaded by Jezebel in the Old Testament. But when that spirit of Elijah came back as John the Baptist, the spirit of Jezebel caught him and beheaded him. It, it completed its mission. 
Now it shows you how old just are. Do you know the time gap from the time of, do you know how long it is from the time of Elijah to the time of John the Baptist? Those are many years. I think even centuries or even a thousand years. Altars are still powerful. Elijah didn't destroy the altar. That altar was claiming to the head of Elijah. It got the head of Elijah in the New Testament. So it's very important to deal with altars. Altars don't die. Altars are create a system, a system of, of, of operation. Now, how do we subdue the altars in Mombasa? This topic I want to share about, we will talk about today. Now, how do you store, in, how do we subdue the altars in Mombasa? How do you subdue the altars in uh, in in your city? Now, in Mombasa, let me deal with the, the marine kingdom. We have water bodies in Mombasa because it's at the coast. We have the Indian Ocean. Now, I told you in the previous video, when Moses went down to Egypt, the first miracle Moses did before, apart from turning the road into snake, Moses went and turned water into blood. What Moses did, Moses was paralyzing the marine spirits which Egypt were using for witchcraft. So the power of Egypt had was very, very, very weak. They were very weak because the first thing Moses did, Moses hit the power base of Egypt. Now we understand Moses had a strategy. God gave him a strategy. He, he, he didn't just go and started to do his own things and just moving around, praying and say, eh. no. Moses, God told him, today go and turn water into blood. He went and paralyzed and cut off power supply. And you know, in a warfare, when people go to war, nations go to war, they target the sources of power of the, the, the nation they're fighting with. When they hit your source of power, you have no power, you have no electricity, electricity. So it's easy for them to strike and destroy you. That's what Moses did. By turning water into blood, he hit the powers of Egypt and subdued them. You get my point? Now, in Mombasa, intercessors, intercessors, you can go to the beach, to the water bodies where they are. If your place is near a river, calling upon intercessor, prayer holders, people who are filled with the Spirit of God, people who know what they are doing, not uh, these shallow, shallow Christians. You go to the beach, go to the water bodies where they are. You pray, start interceding, pray with the Spirit in that area. Bind that Spirit, that marine kingdom, bind that spirit, evil spirits which come from the ocean, trying to control people in that city, subdued in the name of Jesus. This is why the Bible says creation is growing for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, you as a son, that is when you are manifesting your sonship, you are freeing creation from the bondage which was which occurred during the fall. You need to pray. If you have those who believe in anointing oil, you can go and anoint the water bodies. Anoint, pour the anointing oil in the ocean. Pour the anointing oil in the river. Prophesy, speak a word of God. Bind that spirit. Bind that demon. These are strategies I'm giving you for warfare. Do it. You can do it once you have it regularly. Always go because warfare is not a one-time thing. It's something which is continuous. Make a habit to be visiting water bodies, to pray, bind the spirit in the water bodies. Listen, don't fear water bodies, don't fear the ocean, don't fear the rivers, don't be afraid of marine spirit. Those things have no power. They're not supposed to operate there. The marine spirits are not supposed to operate in the ocean. God did not make, God did not create the ocean for marine spirits. God did not make the rivers for marine spirits. No, they were meant to give God glory. So you have the power to go and kick out every evil spirit in the marine kingdom. I shall give you power to the phone serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing but your enemies hurt you. Go, go there as prayer warriors, as, uh, as intercessors, go and bind that spirit in any marine kingdom. Make it a habit to be visiting water bodies to pray. You are not going to, listen, I have to clarify, you are not going to pray to the water body, no. You are not going to draw power from the water body, no. Please get me right. I don't want people to, to misquote me. You are going to go the water body to subdue whatever spirits 
which are coming from the water body, which are being used with witchcraft power. We are going to subdue it in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are not your word, Father, not your word. If you don't believe anymore, just pray. Pray in the spirit. Now, another part which is very important now. Very, very, very important for intercessors in Mombasa. Intercessors. Intercessors in Mombasa. Go to the beach. Pray there. Go and prophesy over the water bodies. Prophesy. Speak the word of God. Silence every forces of that is coming from the ocean. Powers of darkness, silence them. The marine kingdom, silence them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, another point which is very important. Now, this is the main key. This is now, this is the main key of how to possess the gates of the city or, or how to subdue the spiritual forces of the main city. Now, in the story of Joshua, when Moses died, they wanted to go and capture Jericho. But when they went to Jericho, there were, there were walls, big walls. They couldn't enter Jericho. So they were somehow stranded. Now, God gave Joshua a strategy. God told Joshua to go around the city seven times. And then on the seventh day, seven times, they should shout and the walls came down. And they were able to conquer that city. Now, this is the strategy which, which is God is giving to the church. Make it a habit, intercessors, make it a habit to go around the city praying. Go around the city praying in the spirit, speaking in tongues. Go around, make it a habit. It's my habit. Every day I do it. Make it a habit. Just get into a car. Go around the city as you are in the car. If you are, if you are one, if you are two, I don't know how many you can be inside the car. Or while you're in the car. In the car, driving around the city, especially around the CBD at the center of the city. Be praying, be praying for the city, be praying, praying the spirit, pray for the city, prophesy for the city, make it a habit. Make it a habit every day. Intercessors should be driving around the city, praying, praying in the spirit. You know, the, the most accurate way to pray is praying in the spirit. I do pray in the spirit more because it's the most accurate way to pray that praying in the understanding. You know, when you are praying and understanding, you are limited with your words. You are limited with your understanding. But when the Spirit of God prays, the Spirit knows the details of the matter. He knows the details of the case. So He takes over the case and intercedes on your behalf. So, intercessors. This is a key I'm giving intercessors all over the world. Churches. Organize your intercessors. Give them a vehicle. Give them a car or be a bus. Let them enter the bus. And then start praying as you go around the city. Just pray. Make it a habit. Pray over, over and over. Pray, pray, pray. Intercessing, interceding, speaking in tongues, prophesying over the city. Don't make noise. You don't have to make noise. You don't have to. You don't have to go like no, no, no. Just take it easy. Just pray. Pray from the heart. Pray from the spirit. Going around, make it a habit. I do that. Sometimes. I take, sometimes, I take a taxi, go around the city with a taxi, just pray. And I don't have to, to show people that I'm praying, but I know that I'm praying. I'm interceding for the city. Take a cab, take a matato, take a taxi, take whatever means you can. You don't, you don't need to have a car to do that. Just take any means and just have the money to move around town and just tell the driver, just take me around town. Just as you're going around, pray, intercede now. If you don't have money, sometimes when you reach the CBD, you can come out of the vehicle and just walk on foot around the town as you're praying. Praying, interceding from the heart. I'm not saying this. Don't pray those disturbing prayers. You are, you are, you are praying, you are trying to draw attention, you are trying to disturb people, you are trying to become a nuisance. No, don't do that. That's not what I'm talking about. They just want to pray. And you're making it. No, 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 don't. That's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm mean, just praying from your heart, praying from your spirit. You're just walking, you're just like you're walking in town. You just you you know what you're doing. You're interceding. If you are only alone, you can do it alone. I usually, I usually do it alone. Or if you have a team, you can go with the team. And but I'm I, I am telling churches today, churches. 
You have intercessors, prayer groups. Get out of the church. Stop focusing on your on your ministry. God is calling us to take to possess nations and to possess cities. It's not enough to have churches. God wants territories. We need to take territories for God. And you know what? The more you pray over a city, you raise an altar for God in that city. Constant prayer builds an altar. When you when we do that, when you go around the city praying, most of the time you find yourself the city will begin to will begin to accept you. Do you know what? You know a city can reject you. You know the land can reject you. The land can refuse to cooperate with you. But when you do these kinds of prayer, make an effort. If you are in a city, you are looking for the for a job in that city, or you are trying to do something in that city, and things are not working. You have been praying, you have been fasting. Things are not working. This is this is what I'm giving you. The principalities in that city have to be subdued for you to get that breakthrough. You need to subdue the principality in that city for you to get that breakthrough in that city. There's some people in you. Our breakthroughs are not coming. Why? Because the principalities of that city are holding on that level. They are resisting. They have built up a resistance to resist you from receiving that miracle. Now, what you need to do, you need to pray over that city. Prayer, constant prayer. Don't pray once. Don't pray twice. Don't pray ten times. Don't pray a thousand times. Pray always. Make it your habit. I'm speaking to the body of Christ. Make it a habit to go around the city to pray. Make it a habit to go around the city just praying over the city. Praying in the spirit over the city. Stop praying for your needs and, oh Lord, I want a car, I want a house. No, those are childish prayers. When you pray over a city, the gates of the city will open for you. Eventually, you'll get a job in that city. You'll get a house in that city. The blessings of God which are supposed to be yours in that city are going to be opened up for you. So this is very important. This is a very important message I'm sending to you today. I want you to go around the city. The same way Joshua went around the city and the walls fell and they were able to conquer the city. As you are going around praying, interceding for the city, praying, bringing down altars, satanic altars in that city. As you go around praying, the walls are falling. The principalities are, are losing their hold on you. They are losing their grip on you. And you'll begin to see changes in your life. Ministers, pastors, you businessmen, you have gone into a city. You have been in a city for a while and your ministry is not moving and your business is not moving nothing seems to work in that particular city what you need to do is to possess the gates of that city when you, when you possess the gates of the city everything in that city begins to work for you your voice becomes influential in that city your business becomes influential Politicians will begin to listen to you. Why? Because you have dealt it from the spiritual angle. Life is spiritual. Don't deal, don't deal with things from the natural perspective. Deal with things from the spiritual perspective. When you deal with things from the spiritual perspective, the natural will flow. Why? Because life is spiritual. So guys, it's very important. Let's make it a habit. Let's go around the city praying. When you do that, all those altars, all those demonic altars in the cities, they'll begin to lose their grip. They'll become weak. They'll become powerless. You know, Jesus has given us power, but if you don't use what God has, has given us, we'll look as if you, we have nothing. A Christian, God has invested so much in a Christian. We have the Holy Ghost, but if you don't step out and do what you're supposed to do, nothing will go to work. And let me tell you something. As a Christian, if you don't pray, God, God won't do anything. Prayer is the only platform where you, 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 you legally invite God to, into your matters. I talked about this in the video called Spiritual Legalities. If you don't pray, you don't give God legal rights into your affairs. 
Now, we need to give God legal rights into the affairs of our cities. Don't wait for the day of trouble to begin to pray. Don't wait for the days things are not working to begin to pray. Start praying now. I pray that you be able to give yourself to prayer. Men ought always to pray. Prayer is not for weak people. Prayer is not for desperate people. Prayer is not for pastors. Prayer is for all men. And I pray that God will give you that grace. Now, when you do, you know, when you do this, you become, a, you, you become a gatekeeper. God wants you to become a gatekeeper in that city. When we, when we go around the city praying all the time, we become gatekeepers of that city. Nothing in that city can happen without our permission. Because you have, you have got all the keys. May you be a gatekeeper, an influential person in the city. And when you possess the gates of city, you will uh, eventually possess the gates of nations. And you will be able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and usher in his second coming. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm Glafos Wanyama Kloridi. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys. Keep on subscribing, watch my videos, share them, watch my music on the channel. And also thank you for sending us support. Keep on sending us your financial support. It will help us do whatever we are doing. See you in the next video and God bless you. Hello. I'm seated in the heavenly places, far above powers and all principalities. There under my feet, there is no.